In 1742, the English poet Thomas Gray penned a poem called Ode on a Distant Prospect of Eton College, in which he wrote the famous line, Where ignorance is bliss, tis folly to be wise. With all of its negative connotations, ignorance truly is a state of nirvana. For some, it lasts for a brief season, while for others it endures for a lifetime. I have found that most of the world's population falls into the latter category. However, my ignorance was stolen from me. It occurred on the night of January 18, 1926. While this may seem an absurd and pointless statement, I must refer to an evening two years ago, when I discovered several disturbing facts about the world and its genuine history. Since that evening I haven't had a peaceful night's sleep. The serenity that originates from within ignorance had been torn from me that fateful night, and I knew it would never return. The incident followed a meeting I had with a senior member of the faculty from the local college, a man named Dr. Henry Armitage. The doctor was the senior librarian at Miskatonic University in Arkham, Massachusetts. Dr. Armitage had graduated from the institute in 1881, and subsequently obtained his doctorate from Princeton and his Doctor of Letters degree at Johns Hopkins. During the summer of 1882, some 43 years earlier, he became captivated by the occult when several workmen uncovered an ancient ritual chamber beneath the basement of the university. The discovery prompted Armitage to investigate the room's origins. His search led him to uncover many old and obscure works in the library's rare book section. One of which was a copy of the venerated Necronomicon. After some research, Armitage discovered that only two other copies of this tome existed. This made the Miskatonic copy quite rare and extremely valuable. Over the intervening four decades, he studied the work extensively, and the aged scholar became both intrigued and troubled by the book's seemingly impenetrable mysteries. The book is kept under lock and key. Only a handful of people have been allowed to study its pages, and for good reason. The book was purported to have been written in the 8th century by a crazed Arab mystic called Abdul al Hazard. He referred to the tome as the Kitab al Azif. Al Hazard was a self proclaimed worshipper of the deities Yog Sothoth and Cthulhu. Many thought he was possessed by demons. He was born in the city of Sana'a in Yemen. From here, he claimed to have traveled to the ruins of Babylon the ancient Egyptian metropolis of Memphis, and the desolate empty quarter of Arabia. It was during these travels that he purportedly accumulated a vast trove of esoteric knowledge and wisdom. His final years were spent in Damascus, where he compiled this arcane wisdom into the Kitab al-Azif. In this work, he detailed the veiled history of the Earth's true origins, a record of the world's antediluvian past, which chronicled the arrival of an extraterrestrial species upon the Earth, an alien race known as the Elder Things. They possessed immense knowledge of genetics, and they started terrestrial life on the planet through arcane experimentation. They created the Shoggoths to serve as their slaves and as a food source. These creatures built for them vast cyclopean cities, both above and below the oceans. By the time of humanity's appearance, the Elder Things were beginning to physically deteriorate, and they had lost their ability to travel through space. However, their ultimate downfall came with the arrival of another group of extraterrestrial entities, called the Great Race of Yith. A massive war soon developed, which provoked their Shoggoth slaves into rebellion. The Elder Things suffered horrific casualties, and they abandoned their vast cities of stone. In a desperate attempt to survive, they placed themselves into a deep hibernation, locked away beneath the frozen mountains of Antarctica, inside their last stronghold, called the City of the Elder Things. But the stars have aligned, and the bold ones are awakening from their self-imposed slumber. The world now awaits, the rise of the Elder Things.
In order to defeat the Elder Things, the investigators will need to solve four mysteries instead of the normal three. This makes them a particularly dangerous ancient old one to oppose. To offset this, the Doom Track mercifully begins the game at a generous level of 16. As a part of the setup, the Antarctic side board is placed near the side of the main board. This will offer additional spaces for the investigators to explore, but also highlight the need for transportation assets to reach the remote region of Antarctica and navigate its treacherous snowy landscape. The cultists of the Elder Things are fairly docile, only possessing a strength of one and an endurance of one. More importantly, if the Lore Minus One test can be passed, the cultist is automatically defeated and the investigator may draw a random ally asset from the deck, a reward for freeing the victim's mind of alien magic. This is potentially a very powerful force multiplier, and steps should be taken to increase each investigator's lore ability by any means possible. Other world encounters can be used to move an investigator to the Plateau of Lang, a difficult location to reach on the Antarctic side board. The Mythos deck is somewhat forgiving, with only a 20% chance of drawing a rumor card during the initial turn. Jacqueline Fine, the Psychic At first, Jacqueline's dreams of fire and destruction seemed like a curse. Monsters ran rampant through city streets and some greater darkness loomed on the horizon. However, she has recently learned to control her visions and observe events in detail. Yesterday, she traveled from Boston to Minneapolis to explore an abandoned warehouse she'd seen in her dreams. Inside, she found evidence of a terrible cult that had practiced unspeakable rituals there. Jacqueline hopes to use what she's learned to prevent the terrible future that haunts her sleep. Mark Harrigan, the Soldier during the war, Mark witnessed horrors he could not explain, and he wrote of what he saw in letters to his beloved wife, Sophie. When Mark returned home, he discovered that Sophie was no longer human. One of the beasts that Mark had seen on the battlefields of the Western Front had taken over her body, killing her in the process. Afterward, Mark's thirst for vengeance has led him to Helsinki, where he has tracked some of the creatures that had posed as German soldiers during the Great War. Patrice Hathaway, the violinist. Hailed as a musical prodigy from her youth, Patrice has performed for royalty and society's brightest minds all around the world. For years she thought that her consciousness simply drifted as she played, but she's come to believe that an intelligence exists behind her visions. Somehow the notes form a bridge between her own mind and another. The more she grasps what her music exposes her to, the more afraid she becomes. After last night's concert, in Sydney, she's finally decided to take action. Kate Winthrop, the scientist. Quiet and resourceful, Kate Winthrop has been obsessed with studying dimensional instability ever since her friend and mentor, Professor Young, was devoured by a beast from another world. Following a peculiar dream and a string of mysterious disappearances, Kate has come to the University of Buenos Aires to continue her research. Now that preliminary testing has been completed on her flux stabilizer, Kate is no longer content to sit idly by. She is determined to seek revenge for the death of her colleague. Good evening and welcome to the Solo Gamers Club. Tonight we'll be playing Eldritch Horror by Fantasy Flight Games. We begin the setup by drawing a prelude card. Prelude deck has been shuffled. We're going to give that a cut and then we're going to draw the top card. And this is going to modify our initial setup of the game in some way. Card is revealed to be Sins of the Past. There is a blackness under your eyes these days that you cannot seem to get rid of. Sleep no longer comes easy and the blood on your hands becomes a rushing river in your dreams, sweeping you away in a raging current. You tell yourself that it had to be done, that the atrocities you committed 
were a necessary evil, but each time the lie becomes harder and harder to swallow. After resolving setup, the lead investigator may gain a dark pact condition to gain a promise of power condition. If the lead investigator gains the condition, another investigator may spawn a number of gates as indicated by the reference card to gain a prom promise of power condition. If that investigator gains a condition, a third investigator may advance the doom by two to gain a promise of power condition. Well, I'm not a big fan of that dark pack condition. Um, we would be gaining a promise of power uh, by taking this offer, but at the same token, we're also going to gain the dark pact. And how that works is uh, whenever there is a reckoning, we have to roll a die. On a result of one, it's time to fulfill your part of the bargain, flip the card. Well, these are always very, very bad. So we're going to end up passing on this, uh, and we'll just continue on with the setup. All right, step one of the setup is to lay out the game board. Uh, step two, we're going to organize our tokens. That's going to consist of our gate stack, which we have here. Uh, we're going to create a clue pool, and of which I'm going to put those into a draw bag. We'll add these into that. That'll be our clue pool. And then all of our other tokens I've got organized in a Plano box. Step three of the setup is choose and place investigators. And prior to the start of the game, I created a, uh, a table, a D1000 table, with all of the investigators that I have from all the expansions. And uh, I've decided I wanted to play a four player game. So we made four rolls on this table and that produced the heroes that you saw in the introduction. Mark Harrigan, the soldier, Patrice Hathaway, the violinist, Jacqueline Fine, the psychic, and Kate Winthrop, the scientist. I made a dice roll and I determined that Mark Harrigan will be the lead investigator to start the game. As a part of this step, we'll be placing their tokens on their starting spaces. Mark Harrigan is going to begin the game in Northern Europe. That's in space 14. Patrice Hathaway will begin in Sydney, Australia. Jacqueline Fine begins the game in the American Heartland. That's in Space 5. And finally, Kate Winthrop will begin in Buenos Aires. And in Step 4, we're going to receive our starting possessions, health, and sanity. Uh, Mark Harrigan will begin the game with a 38 revolver asset and a kerosene asset. And he'll start with 8 health and 4 sanity. Patrice Hathaway begins with a banishment spell and a clue. And she'll begin with 5 health and 7 sanity. Jacqueline Fine begins with a flesh ward spell and a clue. And 4 health and eight sanity. And finally, Kate Winthrop, she's gonna begin with a dimensional study unique asset and one clue, along with eight, uh, five health and seven sanity. All right, step five is determine the ancient one. And as I did with my investigators, I've created a table of all of my ancient ones that I have available. This one is a D100 table. And I've made a roll on that table, and I've determined that I'm going to be playing against the Rise of the Elder Things. And the first thing we do is we're going to consult the setup portion of that uh, Ancient Ones card. And it says, set aside all Rise of the Elder Things special encounters and set up the Antarctica sideboard. And this is the Antarctica sideboard. It has has... Um, six separate locations. Along with the Antarctica sideboard, we'll be adding um, three gate tokens, six clue tokens to the clue uh, bin, and then a outpost and mountain encounter deck, along with a separate research deck that will be used 
only on the Antarctica board. And then as a part of the setup of the sideboard, we're also going to set aside an elder thing, giant penguin, proto Shogoth, and Shogoth monster. And we'll keep those uh, aside of the board for later use. And now we're going to create our monster cup. That is basically all of the uh, non-epic monsters that we have. We've put those in a bowl with the exception of those that we've set aside for the Antarctica board. And those we'll be using those to draw from. And now we've shuffled all of our card decks and uh, those are ready for play. And now we've prepared our Mythos deck. Now I haven't taken any cards out. This is just going to be a random collection of all of the cards that I have. So this could be an extremely tough deck or it could be an easy one or right down the middle. There's no way to tell. And now at step nine, we're going to resolve our starting effects. We begin by placing a reference card corresponding to the number of players that we'll be using. And we've done that. That's card that's showing four players. That will list the number of spawns that we need to make for when we're spawning clues or gates or during a monster surge. And then we're going to place the doom uh, token. Now that's going to begin on 16 per the Ancient Ones card. So we'll place it on the 16 marker. And then we've randomly drawn those cards from the asset deck. We have a Grim Lexicon, three card Monty, Hired Muscle, and a Mysterious Tome. Next, we're going to place the Omen token on the green comet space of the Omen track. And now we need to place the active expedition. So we're going to take our expedition deck that's been shuffled. We're going to cut that and then whatever card is revealed, that is where the expedition will begin the game. And that one's going to start in London. So we're going to place the expedition marker in London. And now we'll spawn an initial gate and monster. So we'll draw the top token from the gate stack. And that's revealed to be Hyperborea space 13. All right. And then we're going to draw a monster from the monster cup to correspond with that. And that one is revealed to be a fire vampire. All right. And we place the gate and monster in space 13. That's Hyperborea. And now we're going to spawn our clues. Our uh, icon reference card indicates we should have two clues spawned. So we're going to draw two clue tokens and place those in the corresponding spaces. First one drawn is space three. And the next token is space 13. All right. So we'll place those in those spaces. Number three is down here in the South Atlantic, uh, Pacific. And 13 is up in the northern reaches of Europe. And our last step is to draw our starting mystery card. And that one is revealed to be Binding the Dark God. While the Dark God is still weakened, a new prison can be created to contain it. Through a series of rituals, the Dark God can be bound to another world. When this card enters play, place a mystery token on the Plateau of Lang. As an encounter, an investigator on the Plateau of Lang may attempt to bind the Dark God to another world. He draws and resolves an other world encounter. If the effect allows him to close this gate, he may spend one clue and place an Eldritch token on this card. At the end of the Mythos phase, if there are Eldritch tokens on this card equal to half the number of investigators solve this mystery. All right, so we're going to need to get two Eldritch tokens on this card in order to solve that first mystery. And this is going to be uh, on the Plateau of Lang. That's going to be on the Antarctica sideboard. And so we're going to place the mystery token on the Plateau of Lang. And that completes the setup and we're ready to begin turn one of the game.
Before we begin turn one, uh, let's see if we can develop a strategy that is going to give us the best chance of winning. In order to win the game, we're going to need to complete four mysteries. The first mystery that we are aware of is Binding the Dark God. In order to complete that mystery, we're going to need to get investigators to the Plateau of Lang. Uh, now that's a difficult location to reach. It's deep in the Antarctic board and that um, it's going to require quite a bit of travel to get there. And then once there we're going to have to successfully complete another world encounter. And we're going to need to do that twice in order to generate the Eldritch tokens that we need to complete that mission. Examining the um, Mythos deck, we know that stage one is going to consist of two green, two yellow, and one blue Mythos card. So we know automatically that we're going to have uh, at least two gates will be spawned in that first five turns with the two yellow cards. We also know that there's going to be at least one Rumor card that is going to come out, and there's a 20% chance of that coming out in the first turn. So those are all things we need to kind of keep in mind in our planning. Now the two closest investigators that we have to Antarctica are Kate Winthrop, which is in Buenos Aires. She's two spaces away from Antarctica. And then we also have Patrice Hathaway in Sydney. She's one space away from Antarctica. So those would be our two most likely characters that we can get to Antarctica uh, quickly, as quickly as possible. Now there's another way we can reach the Plateau of Lang, and that is by conducting an other world encounter, and then following that we can move directly to that plateau. And um, the way to do that then would be to close gates. Now we do have uh, Mark Harrigan, he's in Northern Europe, he would be able to reach the gate that is open in Hyperborea in uh, one, two, three spaces away. So that would be one method we can do. And then from completing that, closing that gate, he would be able to transport to the Plateau of Lang. Uh, that might be a reasonable way to proceed. The gate in Hyperborea is defended by a fire vampire. Now that's kind of an interesting monster. It has physical resistance. Um, now what I would propose in how to handle this is if we do want to attempt to move Mark Harrigan to Hyperborea, there is a way we can attempt to get rid of this fire vampire without him having to confront this in the normal manner. And that would be to have Patrice Hathaway utilize her banishment spell that she has. It's an action and allows her a plus two lore test. Uh, if she's able to pass it, she can discard one monster on the nearest space containing a gate with a toughness equal to or less than her test results. Now, the toughness of this creature is two. So if she would be able to get two successes, uh, we'd be able to eliminate that creature uh, before Harrigan would even arrive at that location. So I think we might attempt to do that. And in the meantime, I'll be moving Winthrop and Hathaway towards Antarctica. Now Jacqueline Fine is in the um, Midwest area of North America, Space 5, and I think we're going to try to use her as kind of our floating investigator. And now another thing we need to keep in mind is we're utilizing personal missions. Each of the investigators has a personal mission and uh, those personal missions have a uh, success and failure condition, basically. Two of the investigators, Winthrop and Harrigan, will fail their personal missions if another investigator is defeated or devoured. So it's going to be important that we don't allow this to happen as this is going to have permanent long-term effects on the two, two of our investigators. So it's going to be important for us to not allow uh, any of our investigators to become um, uh, defeated or devoured. So we're going to have to watch our um, health and sanity levels 
uh, make sure that those don't go down too low on any particular investigator. And I'm sure there's an infinite number of things we could discuss for strategy, but uh, these are just the main points that I've kind of come up with, and I'm going to try to follow those for at least the initial part of the game. So now we're going to move on to our first turn, turn one. All right, we're going to begin with uh, our lead investigator, Mark Harrigan, and we're in the actions phase, and he'll be able to conduct two actions. Um, his first action is going to be a travel action. He's going to take the rail line to Rome. We'll move him into Rome. And his second action will be to acquire a focus token. Focus tokens are very valuable in that they allow a reroll of one die, but in many cases, uh, focus tokens are necessary to complete certain um, actions in, during encounters. So it's always good to have a supply of those. So we're going to give Harrington a focus token, and that's going to end his action phase. We'll move on to the next hero, and that's Patrice Hathaway. She's in Sydney. Okay, Patrice, Patrice Hathaway is in Sydney, and uh, she is also going to conduct a uh, focus action that will give her a focus token and then also we're going to utilize her uh, banishment spell and as I discussed during the strategy section we're going to attempt to have her banish that fire vampire uh, in Hyperborea. Uh, the fire um, vampire is kind of a difficult monster to, to um, handle so I think that this might be a better way if we're able to to get rid of it. So she's going to employ, as an action, the Banishment spell. And I'll bring that up on the screen. And the action is Test Lore plus 2. Uh, Patrice Hathaway's Lore is a 3, so this will allow her 5 dice. So we're going to roll 5 dice, and if she can get a total of 2 successes, that would be sufficient to banish the Fire Vampire. Okay, here is the roll. And she has four successes. How about that? All right, we're going to flip that uh, card over and see what four successes do for us. All right, three or greater. The magic works to great effect. Discard any number of monsters on that space with a total toughness equal to or less than your test result in, uh, instead. All right, and then flip this card. Well, that is easily going to be able to get rid of the fire vampire. He has a um, toughness of two, so we've easily um, destroyed him with the banishment spell. All right, that is absolutely great. All right, next up is Jacqueline Fine, the psychic. She's currently in Minneapolis in the Midwest. And uh, her first action is gonna be a travel action. We're gonna have her take the rail line to Arkham. Then once in Arkham, she's going to do a focus action, and she's going to gain a focus token. My plan for her, for the initial part, at least until we know more information, my first plan is um, she's going to attempt to get an incantation spell while she's in Arkham. That's one of the likely things that could happen. Then I'm going to have her, I think, travel to London and see if she can undertake that expedition. Uh, that might be interesting. That's at least preliminary for now. Okay, that completes uh, Jacqueline's turn, and we'll move on to Kate Winthrop. Okay, Kate Winthrop is in Buenos Aires, and we're going to start out uh, by having her do a prepare for travel action. And she's going to gain a ship ticket. And then with that ship ticket, I'm going to have her travel going uh, to Antarctica. So she's going to move to the sea space at 12, spend the ship ticket, and arrive in Antarctica. Okay, Kate Winthrop is in Antarctica. Now this space is the same as the space on the main board. Uh, now there is also a local path that leads to the Miskatonic outpost. And it says here during the action phase, 
an investigator may move from Antarctica to Miskatonic Outpost or from Miskatonic Outpost to Antarctica. So she's going to take that uh, local path to Miskatonic Outpost. That's a free move. That completes our action phase. We're going to move into the encounter phase. And starting with the first player, uh, our lead investigator, which is Mark Harrigan. Harrigan is currently in Rome. So he's going to do a location adventure in Rome. We'll draw the top card from the Europe deck. And that card is revealed to be Rome. You discover a hidden shrine to the Sibyl in the ancient catacombs. It will be a long process to excavate the find, but removing such a blight from Rome's foundations will grant you a higher reward. You may become delayed to gain a blessed condition. Hmm, all right. Okay, Harrigan has a passive ability that says you cannot become delayed or gain a detained condition unless you choose to. Now, the condition on the uh, adventure here is that uh, you may become delayed to gain a blessed condition. Yeah, in this case, I don't think that's going to apply because I think in order to gain the blessed condition, you have to become delayed. So even though he has that ability, I don't think you can, I think that would be disingenuous to use that passive ability and still gain the blessed condition. I might be wrong about that. Um, I'm going to see if there are any qualifiers in the frequently asked questions um, sheet before I proceed. No, I've checked the frequently asked questions and I couldn't find anything that would help to resolve that. I don't believe that he can do that. Um, it, it says that uh, the reason being of the passive reads, can you, uh, you cannot become delayed or gain a detained condition unless you choose to. So in this case, I think it's a part of getting the blessed condition is that you do become delayed. So he's going to pass on that and we'll move on to Patrice Hathaway. She's currently in Sydney. Patrice is going to undergo a location adventure and, and that is in Sydney. So we're going to draw an Australia and Asia encounter card. And that one reads, A group of hunters provide you with the skills to track down a bunyip improve strength. When you find the massive four-legged creature, your weapons cannot pierce its leathery hide. You try to protect yourself from the beast's terrible claws and teeth. Perform a strength minus one test. If you fail, lose two health. All right, so Patrice is going to conduct a, a strength test. It's a strength minus one. Her current strength now is one plus the uh, improvement to strength and that'll give her just one die so we're going to roll one die and see if she can pass this she does have a focus marker if she chooses to want to use that here's the roll she rolled a one okay that's a failure and um i think uh, she'll just take the uh, two health loss so that'll bring her down from five down to three and that will complete her encounter phase. And now we'll move on to Jacqueline Fine. She is in the uh, Arkham location and she is going to uh, conduct a location encounter at Arkham. And her encounter reads, At North Point, the white ship calls to you. Will minus one check. All right. Uh, Jacqueline Fine has a will of three, and uh, that has a minus one modifier to it, so she'll be able to roll two dice on this check. And we'll perform that check and find out what happens. Okay, here's her roll. She does have a success. She's got a six, so let's read on. If you pass, the crew shows you arcane wonders. Gain one incantation spell and one random magical asset from the deck. That's absolutely fantastic. All right, let's do that. And she's going to gain the incantation Storm of Spirits. When resolving a combat encounter, 
you may resolve a lower test in the place of the strength test using the same test modifier. If you do, flip this card. All right, and then her random magical asset is holy water. Item, magical. You may discard this card to gain five wisdom, or five will, I'm sorry, and, and strength during a combat encounter. Action, discard this card to choose an investigator on your space to gain a blessed condition. All right, that's absolutely fantastic. Excellent job by Jacqueline Fine. Winthrop is going to encounter the Miskatonic Outpost, and that card reads, After hours of listening to static on the wireless, your mind be begins to play tricks on you. She has to perform a will test. All right. Okay, Winthrop has a will of two, so she'll be able to roll two dice. Okay, here's the roll. And she rolled a five, so she has a success. Let's read on. Uh, it says, if you fail, you begin to hear strange voices even after returning, after turning off the radio, lose one sanity and gain a hallucination condition. All right, so I guess all she does is prevent that from occurring. So that will finish our encounter phase. All right, now we proceed with the Mythos phase. And uh, Mark Harrigan is going to resolve this. He is the lead investigator. Okay, here's the card. And we begin by um, following from left to right on those different icons. The first one is advance the omen by one. So the omen is gonna move from the green comet to the um, blue star pattern. If we had any blue gates out, the Doom Track would be dropping by one for each of those. Uh, next is uh, there's going to be a monster surge. All right, let's take a look at that. Okay, it says here uh, that resolve a monster surge on each space containing a gate that corresponds to the current omen. If no gates correspond to the omen, spawn one gate. Okay, so that's what we're going to do is we're going to spawn a gate. And that one is going to be at the Miskatonic Outpost. All right. And a monster is going to appear there. And that one is revealed to be a Ligor. All right. Okay, we'll take a closer look at that Lulgor. Um, it has a will test and a horror value of two. Has a strength test minus two with a damage of three and a toughness of four. It's a very, very tough creature. It also has a reckoning effect. Each investigator on this space or an adjacent space loses one health and one sanity. All right, that is going to appear at the Miskatonic Outpost which unfortunately is where uh, Kate Winthrop currently is. All right, we'll have to deal with that next turn. Okay, our next step is to spawn clues. And uh, with a four player game, we're gonna be spawning two clues. Okay, here's the first one. It's gonna be in the Amazon. And the second one at location seven. All right, so we'll place this one in the Amazon and then location seven, that's in Panama. All right. And now we're gonna go on to the um, event. It reads, archeological breakthrough, ongoing. After resolving a research encounter, if an investigator gained exactly one clue from that encounter, he gains one additional clue. And this also has a reckoning effect. Each investigator may spend one clue to improve one skill of his choice, then discard this card. So that one will remain active. We're going to place that near the legend and uh, we'll keep that active for us. And that completes the mythos phase. Uh, the last step is to decide if we want to change the lead investigator. And um, 
I think we'll keep it the way it is. We'll have uh, Mark Harrigan remain as the lead investigator. And that's going to complete turn one. And I think we're going to end the video here. Uh, the investigators had a relatively easy first turn. They were able to acquire uh, some spells and some equipment. And um, the only real downside we had was Patrice Hathaway lost two health. She's currently at three health. Uh, other than that, some clues have been brought out on the board. And we're going to proceed on in the next, next video with that initial plan that I had. And we'll see how that works out for the investigators. So please join me again next time as we continue to play through Eldritch Horror. Thanks for watching and have a good evening.